Uh, in this video, we're going to look at one-sided derivatives at a point, and uh, as they apply mainly to piecewise functions as we have in front of us. So usually the question that's asked with a piecewise function is, um, is this function differentiable at that changeover value? Um, and we, you probably wouldn't have the graph in front of you. I think the graph makes it pretty clear, right? We see a corner here, and since there's a corner, that means it's not differentiable there. But um, the point of this video is to give you some tools to use if you have to do this more analytically rather than just uh, looking at a calculator or uh, looking at a graph. So uh, first of all, let's recall that a function is differentiable at x equals a if this limit, this limit of the difference quotient exists. So that implies that there is a right hand and a left hand limit of that difference, qu difference quotient and that those both exist and that those both equal the same value. So with a piecewise function what we can do is we can look at the left and the right hand derivatives uh, using this definition and then just see if those values match up. Now before we do that let's just note that this function is continuous. Note that f of x is continuous and you need a function to be continuous in order for it to even have a shot at being differentiable. So f of x is continuous because since, um, well, the definition of continuity is at the limit um, as x goes to a of f of x has to equal f of a. And let's, let's look at the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x and see if that equals f of 1. Uh, well, f of 1 is easy to evaluate. f of 1 is just, uh, well, I'd be plugging it into that top function because that's where it's the, the function is defined uh, for x equal to 1. So that would be 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. And now here we've got to look at both right and left hand limits here. So if I take the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x, and then also the limit as x goes to 1 from the left. Let's just see if those are the same. So this is going to equal the limit as x goes to 1 from the right, and from the right we're looking at the function x plus 1. And I can substitute and get 1 plus 1, which is 2. Whereas here, I'm coming from the left-hand side, which means I need to evaluate the function by plugging it into x squared plus x. But even so, when I plug it in, I'm going to get 2. So therefore, uh, the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x equals f of 1, so it's continuous. All right, now let's check the right and left-hand der derivatives. So the left-hand derivative, I abbreviate that LHD, the left-hand derivative would be the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of the difference quotient. Now, in this case, since I'm coming from the left, f of x is going to be x squared plus x. And um, f of 1, we saw, was 2. So that's minus 2 all divided by x minus 1, and I'm hoping this will factor, I think it does. This is the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of x minus 1 times x plus 2, all divided by x minus 1. Those cancel, and you get the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of x plus 2, which is 1 plus 2, which is 3. All right, and now if we check the right-hand derivative, that's going to be the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x minus f of 1 divided by x minus 1. Now, uh, coming from the right-hand side, f of x is x defined to be x plus 1. So this is going to equal the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of x plus 1 minus f of 1, which was a 2, divided by x minus 1. 
but this ends up equaling um, x minus 1 over x minus 1, which just ends up equaling uh, 1. So, this function is not differentiable at x equals 1 because the right-hand derivative uh, is 1 and the left-hand der derivative is 3. In other words, the slopes of those secant lines, the slope of the secant lines coming from the right is equal to 1 and the slope of the secant, the slopes of the secant lines coming from the left uh, is equal to 3, or are approaching 3, I should say. So, a couple things to take away from this example. First of all, um, Left, right-hand derivatives and left-hand derivatives are things we can actually um, evaluate. Okay, so functions can have left-hand and right-hand derivatives. So, like at, at endpoints, you can find a, you know a, a left-hand and a right-hand derivative of a function. Uh, also, these need to be the right-hand and left-hand derivatives need to be the same at a at an interior value in order for the function to be differentiable there. So, what you would say here is um, f of x is not differentiable at x equals 1 because the left-hand derivative does not equal the right-hand derivative. Now, in practice, to be honest, this is not really how, especially for those of you who are watching who take AP courses, you're probably not going to do the problem this way because you're not going to use this different quotient. You're going to use all these rules, differentiability rules, that you're going to learn probably very, very soon if you don't know them already. So on the next slide, I'm going to do this problem much more quickly, and that's probably the way you'll be doing them if you come across a problem like this uh, in, your, in your course. All right, so you may come across, across this similar question, or the exact same question, uh, same function, no graph, and you'll just be asked, is f of x differentiable at x equals a? Uh, I'm sorry, x equals 1. So you'll say, um, you'll check for continuity, which we did in the, the last page, because um, if that fails, then the function can't be differentiable. But what you're also allowed to do is actually come up with the, uh, come up with the, the derivative function using rules that you'll probably learn soon. So the rules you'll learn is that, especially for polynomials, they're easy to apply. The derivative of x squared plus x is just 2x plus 1, and the derivative of, at, uh, the derivative of x plus 1 is just a 1. Now watch what I do here. I put x less than 1, not less than or equal to 1, and I put x bigger than 1. I didn't put less than or equal to or greater than or equal to because we're asking whether the function is differentiable at 1. So we can't put an equals there. That would assume that it is. What we need to do, and this is, uh, I'm applying a theorem now that's actually kind of overlooked in, you know, an AP textbook, but it's fine. You can use it. Um, that is that if we just take a look at the limits as x goes to 1 from the right of f prime of x, and we look at the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f prime of x, as long as these are the same, then we can say the function is differentiable at x equals 1. So, and you'll, you'll see this is a much quicker way to do it than we did on the last page. So, coming from the right-hand side, uh, it was just 1, right? Because... Uh, because that's the derivative is find, defined to be 1 when we're coming from the right-hand side. So that is just a 1. And coming from the left-hand side, we're going to use what the function is defined to be, which is uh, 2x plus 1. And when you plug in a 1 there, you get 3. And so um, this means at the limit, so these are different values, right? These are not equal. So this is the limit as x goes to 1 of f prime of x does not exist. And so therefore, you can answer this question with a resounding no. All right. So this page is probably, for those of you who are looking for the, the quick takeaway, when you're doing a problem like this, um, this is probably the way you'll want to do it. Um, and again, technically, you're using a theorem, this theorem here, which basically says that the limit um, as x goes to 1 from the right and left of f prime 
if those uh, are the same, then we can say the derivative exists at that point. Otherwise, it doesn't. So anyway, hope this helped, and um, I'll see you in the next video.